Hey guys, Sebastian here with another Cardano technical update. Uh, going right into it, uh, the first item is still talking about the uh, compiler upgrade, which as we saw last week actually involves the upgrade of multiple different tools. If you want to know more about these different uh, libraries being upgraded, you can go see last week's video. And this is so this is still in progress. Uh, the next item is talking about the uh, app uh, Veyor, which is a tool for continuous integration. So if you don't know what continuous integration is, it's just a, a way to make sure that every time you make any change, you don't accidentally break uh, the build process. So if you look at a given pull request uh, by IOSK, you can see the continuous integration down here and the very system set up. So the app there is right here and it's set up uh, specifically for uh, Windows. So this is only testing on the Windows operating system. So if you open up these results right here, you can see that it looks at uh, the pull request downloads all the information, starts the build, and gives you a report about like if there are any errors or anything that happened. Uh, so this is what they're talking about here. We're trying to make sure the build time when they're running App Bayer on their pull request is staying the same. There's no regression. Uh, so here's, uh, if you're wondering when they start using this, here's the uh, pull request where they added App Bayer, uh, which is in December. Uh, 2016. So this is like when they added this to their GitHub branch. Uh, the next one is uh, talking about uh, benchmarking and HTTP-based block sync. So you've seen these two items come up uh, week after week. So I'll kind of go into the update so far. Uh, for the HTTP-based uh, block sync uh, benchmark, you can see kind of results here. So we've seen this uh, pull request before where they're talking about create HTTP block sync. We talked about it briefly in the past. Uh, and you can see that there is some um, uh, benchmarking done here four days ago where they're talking about the total sync using HTTP was 43 minutes, uh, whereas syncing from peers took an hour and 45 minutes. Uh, so this is kind of the uh, benchmark they're talking about. There are some graphs over here that are like a not uh, properly rendered. It's kind of hard to see what they're talking about because there's like a very little public information. Uh, but maybe we'll see more in the future. I'm not sure how much they'll make public. Uh, lastly, in this section is uh, the logging proposal. So as far as I know, the logging proposal is still internal. It has not been uh, released to the public yet. Uh, but it looks like uh, they're mostly done in the document. Somebody's just got to review it one last time and hopefully this document will become public afterwards and you can kind of see, kind of see what the discussions were and what they decided on. Next up is the uh, Wallet V1 API. So we've also been talking about this for a few weeks. Uh, so they're talking about uh, trying to like uh, focus on this, which they have been for a while. And uh, they're trying to mostly focus on like error handling and test writing to make sure everything is uh, good to go. And so if we look over here, uh, this uh, pull request that we were keeping track of earlier in previous videos is now merged. So it's now done, uh, which was uh, merged, I believe, not too long ago. Yeah, four days ago is when it was uh, merged into the... Uh, what is it? Uh, develop branch. And here you can see another pull request they've opened up two days ago uh, where they're trying to, you know, catch some more errors and try and do this like uh, error handling uh, that they're talking up here in the report. And uh, hopefully we'll see some more uh, pull requests come out and see what they're doing exactly about error handling and test writing. Uh, one last thing that's uh, not mentioned in this report, but I thought it was like a, you know, interesting to keep track of is the... Uh, readme files across this repository. So if you ever looked at the IOSK repository, there's a bunch of readme files all over the place uh, describing various documentation. And so somebody made an update a day ago uh, that just improves a lot of readmes for various parts of uh, the code base. So if you're interested, you can come check this out, come see what new documentation they've up, they've got on here. And maybe this will help you on your project uh, related to Cardano, or maybe give you some more ideas for other tools and uh, projects you can create on top of it. Uh, next up is the data wallet. Uh, so just jumping right into it, they're mostly talking about uh, the paper wallets. Uh, so here we're just going to look at a sneak peek of the paper wallets actually because they've uploaded some graphics. So you can see right here they have the paper wallet up uh, with various graphics, various colors. So if you're wondering, the colors don't actually correspond to anything other than user choice. When you generate a wallet, you can decide uh, the color based off. I'm not sure if it's going to be a drop down or something, but there's going to be some way for you to decide the color, and you'll be able to print out a paper wallet of your choosing. 
They've also got the actual UI uh, already done. So you can see that kind of this is what it's going to look like where you create a paper wallet, you go through the steps, uh, you enter your password, and you generate the certificate. It's going to show you what it looks like, and you verify, and then it's going to give you uh, the link that you can print out, I believe. Or I'm not sure. Oh yeah, so I believe, yeah, so this is, this is not for you to print out. This is uh, just for you to keep track of the address uh, of the paper wallet that was created. And moving on, uh, next up, uh, they're talking about uh, TLS checks uh, on their uh, API, which runs on Swagger, which is like an API documentation library, uh, which is over here where they added an option to disable TLS on Swagger. And this is mostly just like for debugging purposes. If you don't want to have to deal with uh, certificates, uh, you now you have an option to disable TLS. Uh, I believe the flag is mentioned somewhere in their this pull request, if you want to check it out. I think actually they have documentation on it like near the bottom. Yeah, they, they added some running API examples to talk about the no TLS flag and stuff like that. If you're interested, if you ever run into this problem and you want to disable it, uh, now they have uh, an option for it. Next up, they're talking about the uh, restoration from seed. So we've seen this in a previous week where uh, they're trying to make it so that whenever you restore your wallet, it's uh, much faster, it does not take as long. So this has been something they've been working on a while. They've made some uh, previous changes to try and make it faster. And this is just another change they're working on. So it's, it's still not done yet, but the, you know, they're still working on it. And you can see down here, it says uh, the wallet shows the balance in a matter of seconds, around 20 on staging, uh, which is not, mainnet stage is different mainnet but uh it's a uh, pretty promising so hopefully we'll get to see this uh released uh by the next wallet release uh next one is the networking so they're talking about uh speeding up verification of uh well it's speeding up the verification and application of blocks so i couldn't find it, uh any pull request uh actually doing any code change for this uh but what i did find is a pull request uh, talking about trying to handle storing the blocks on disk and how to be able to read them and save them uh, in a more efficient manner. So if you ever looked into the uh, uh, settlement layer, you might have noticed that uh, the way that uh, blocks are saved in different files is extremely inefficient. And so a lot of people have complained about this, sure enough. And they're trying to, you know, write up a document that they have right here. That's like a proposals for block storage. And they're writing out various ideas for like a uh, one way to do it. So if you're interested in like joining the discussion, you can come check out this file, uh, give them your feedback and all that stuff. Uh, one thing I, I forgot to mention also is that there's a release. Uh, probably you actually know this by now, but there's been a release of both the uh, settlement layer and also the wallet. So if you come to GitHub, you can go to the releases tab and find the new release along with all the improvements. Uh, this is for the settlement layer. Likewise, if you go to the actual wallet, uh, you'll be able to find, I can show you real quick, actually, I, f I forgot to bring it up. Uh, but if you go to releases, you'll be able to find the new wallet release along with the installer and the description of what they've changed in the wallet. Uh, but moving on. Uh, they're talking about the DevOps that they're trying to do some more engineering, uh, technical debt reduction, uh, engineering improvements. Uh, they've been focusing on, focusing on this uh, quite a bit recently. So they're just saying that they, this is like a continuing uh, work to try and improve their continuous integration, as we mentioned before, along with a quicker release cycle. So I think Charles mentioned that they want to have a quicker release cycle for the wallet. So right now the wallet gets a new version very infrequently. So they want to be able to release this uh, much faster to everybody uh, who is now using the wallet. Which is good because I think a lot of people are complaining that uh, the wallet is not being uh, kept up to date fast enough. They would like to be able to take advantage of the new features as fast as possible and have a better sense of where the project is advancing. Uh, next up, they talk about uh, the IELE and the KEVM. Uh, so they're talking about the progress they're making on this, and mostly on the Mantis side. So as I mentioned before, uh, for their VM, the ILE, uh, 
Uh, I believe they're going to be launching it first on Mantis, which is the ETC, Ethereum Classic chain, to try and gather feedback about uh, how it works, any bugs there might be, all this kind of stuff, and then take all their learnings and apply this to the Cardano chain. And a lot of this is done by a contracting company called RV, which is Runtime Verification. If you're interested in their work, you can go to their GitHub page right here, Runtime Verification. And you can see that they have a fork of the Solidity compiler for IELE. You can see they have some work on uh, verifying uh, smart contracts using various uh, verification tools and a bunch of other projects like IELE, Semantics, and all this other stuff. So if you're interested in their work, you can go to their GitHub and follow them and check out their updates. Uh, next up, they're talking about uh, smart contract language, uh, which is they're saying it's still in the early stage and they're working on it, which, uh, you know, it's an update, I guess. You know, all we know is that they're still working on it. Uh, next up, they're, they're talking about progress of two projects that have like been informally elite, uh, informally uh, announced. So one of them is Marlowe. So this one was mentioned in a tweet below here where Charles says, uh, this is a picture of us on a new uh, domain specific language to uh, uh, model financial contracts, which is called Marlowe. So if you're wondering what Marlowe is, this is like a way they're talking about it. And they're saying that uh, they're doing good progress on this. The next one is uh, Reagan, which is also mentioned in this tweet over here. Uh, there's no, not really any detail uh, about exactly what it is, uh, but it, it's talking about fuzzing K, which is like a testing mechanism uh, where you try various inputs and uh, programmatically change the inputs to try and find bugs and do the kind of this uh, verification that your software does not contain any bugs. So inside this report, you kind of go link go into it. They mention uh, comp cert compiler along with KCC. And uh, you can find, if you're interested in uh, COC, I believe, is what it is. It's a verification framework uh, where you can see they say like a goal for all L, X, and Y. You want to prove the proposition that X implies Y implies X. And then you write out your proof. You say like assume X is this one, Y is this one. A stands for this statement here. B stands for this statement here. And then this is like a, what they're trying to prove. If you want to try and understand how this language works, uh, there's uh, some documentation on here and there. It's not that great, I believe. Uh, but they've also got a video where they're trying to walk you through how these proofs work. For the actual uh, semantics, uh, which is the KCC, uh, you can find the GitHub repository right here in the K frameworks where they're talking about the semantics of C and K. So you can kind of go check out uh, what KCC is and how it's progressing. And uh, lastly, you can look up uh, COMCERT. There's a very lengthy paper on the subject, which is a C compiler that is provably correct. Uh, they went through all the work to make sure that any C program you write uh, conforms to the official uh, spec for C and does not contain uh, undefined behavior. So that's it for this week, they also briefly mentioned uh, these accounting research and SL locality, which is related to like uh, the communication between the settlement layer and the communi communication layer. Uh, but they're just saying they're working on it. There's not really much of an update, but uh, an internal document is expected mid-March, uh, which is nice for them, I guess, but it's, you know, nothing that we can really take a look at, unfortunately. But uh, that's it for this week, I believe. Uh, if you have any questions, you know, uh, feel free to ask in the YouTube comments as usual. Uh, all the links to all these different pages I've shown you guys today uh, will be in the YouTube description also. If you want to keep track of all these updates, uh, you can follow me on YouTube. You can also follow me on Twitter or any other platform where I'll post all these updates. And uh, if you're interested in uh, encouraging me to make more videos, uh, you know, a nice comment, subscribe also help. Uh, but I've also got my ADA donation link in the description. Uh, so feel free to, you know, if you have any spare ADA, uh, send them over to me and, uh, you know, encourage me to keep making this uh, content for you guys. All right, take care. We'll see you next week.